excited that you are joining us today as we get to meet Farmer Casey and, of course, our adorable calves, Ginny and Penny. First, this live chat is part of the Adopt-A-Cow program. More than 40,000 teachers and 1 million students every year join the fund for free thanks to our generous supporters like the Dairy Alliance and the Dairy Excellence Foundation. The Adopt-A-Cow and Discover Dairy programs are free online resources that cover common core standards in science, reading, and math, all while using dairy concepts to teach those lessons. The resources can be found at discoverdairy.com, and we'll go ahead and put that in the chat feature for you so you can easily access that. We'd also love for you to join the fun next year for Adopt-A-Cow. So if you're interested in joining again or are new to the program and you want to check it out, registration and re-enrollment opens on May 1st, so just two weeks away. You can go to discoverdairy.com backslash adopt, and there you'll either log in and re-enroll or create a new account and get started. Next, as everyone continues to join us live today, you will see that chat feature is enabled. Please feel free to use that chat feature to comment and ask questions all throughout our chat. We do ask that you please keep all questions and comments related to the chat and school appropriate. We are really excited to hear your questions and I know Farmer Casey is happy to answer them. So before we jump over to Farmer Casey, let's see who is joining us today. I can see lots of you are letting us know where you're from. So first, folks, we had um, Miss Porter say hello. Their cow is Penny and welcome. Uh, we had Miss Denny, who's from Lexington, South Carolina. Hello. Welcome. We've got some folks, uh, Ms. Ziegler from Chapin, Chapin uh, Ms. White from Somerville. Um, we've got Cornerstone Baptist Church from Aiken. We've got Mrs. Tadlock's fourth grade class from Pageland. Hello and welcome fourth graders. Uh, we've got more from Florence, from York, from Walterboro, Lexington, Greenville. Uh, we've got Mrs. Fulcher's second grade class from Peltzer. Hello, second graders, welcome. Uh, we've got Mrs. Kelsey's primary Montessori classroom in Greenwood. Hello. And let's see, a couple more down further here. We've got uh, Mrs. Blanton's second grade class. Welcome. Thank you for coming and joining us this morning. And Mrs. Fortenberry's class. So hello. We're so excited to have you all. Thank you for making the time today to not only chat with me, but also Farmer Casey and your calves. So speaking of that, I am pleased to introduce you to Farmer Casey. Hey, Farmer Hey, Casey, how are you doing today? Good morning, Brittany. We are doing well. I hope everyone is. We are doing it very well, and we've got a nice big crowd joining us today. So we are excited to see you and hear from you. So I'll let you take it away uh, by starting to introduce who you are and your farm. Well, my name is Farmer Casey, and we are 12th generation farmers in South Carolina. Our children are actually the 13th, and we are the third generation of dairy farmers in our family. So that means that um, my husband and myself and his father and mother and his grandmother, we have all farmed together over the last, um, well, with me being in the family, over about the last 20 years. Wow. Uh, our children farm with us, and we have two of them here with us today. We have... Carter Ann and Cora Clark Aww. over there <laughs> um, joining us today for a little bit. And all of our children, we have four, are active on the farm. And our two boys aren't joining us because we actually start chopping silage today uh -huh. to be able to feed our cows. Um, so they're actually in the field doing some field work to make sure that these girls grow up to be big, healthy milk cows. Oh, I love that. So two of them are off working. And hey, the other two are still working too, right? I saw them brushing the cows earlier and getting our beautiful adopted calves ready for the chat. So thank you. To both yes, for helping. they are. <laughs> they have been working very hard this morning to make sure they had everything they need. And now they're actually knocking out some schoolwork while oh. we uh, while we go live. So just love because it. they're on the farm doesn't mean they're not also having to do school too. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. So, Farmer Casey, that is amazing that you guys have so much history and culture just having this farmland and, and taking care of the farm. Um, talk to us a little bit about what does your typical day look like as a dairy farmer? Ooh, my days are long and they start <laughs> early. Um, I typically get up around 4 a.m. Um, and I have my coffee and my quiet time before I wake anybody else in my house because 
when you're all together all day, that is a very important time. Um, <laughs> And then we start waking everybody else up. Um, my husband gets up and our boys get up. Um, they are 16 and 11 and they get up every morning about 530 to help. Uh, we start milking between 530 and 6. Um, and milking takes anywhere from an hour and a half to two and a half hours. Um, if it's really good weather outside, the cows make a lot more milk because our cows are actually housed on pasture um, yeah. instead of in a barn right now during this time of year. And so the better weather, the more milk. Now, if it's rained or it's been real windy, they don't make quite as much milk because weather <laughs> really does affect how much milk a cow gives. Um, after we finished milking, we... Uh, obviously have to feed baby calves. We take care of um, not only the calves that are still on hutches and drinking milk, but then we take care of your step-up calves. So your calves that have been weaned off of milk and are now getting feed and hay have to be mm -hmm. cared for. All the milk cows have to be fed. And our milk cows actually take a little walk, a little stroll every day and go to their grazing pasture once they've eaten their breakfast. Um, yeah. And sometimes we have to encourage some of them who want to lick up every little last scrap <laughs> of breakfast. Um, I'm sure some of you might have a brother who likes to clean everybody's plate after a meal. <laughs> we have some cows mm -hmm. like that, too. <laughs> <laughs> so after we get everybody situated where they're supposed to be um my husband will go and do some field work if it's that time of year like it is right now mm -hmm. um we also will have days about four to five days a week where we have to bottle milk because not only do we ship milk that ends up on your grocery store shelf but we also bottle milk and sell milk at local retailers oh, um so we have that we have to add into our day um, our kids are homeschooled and so they all have to get school done between milking times. And then we also have to deliver milk and that yeah. always <laughs> makes it a little interesting to make sure everybody has what they need. And then we do it all over again. Um, at the end of the day, we milk cows again, we feed all the calves again, and we feed the milk cows again before we wrap up and head to the house. Mm -hmm. Um, ideally we get in the house between seven and eight. Some nights, like last night, it was closer to 1030 because we did a batch of chocolate milk after milking yesterday. Oh, man. Those <laughs> are, sound like very long days, but we certainly appreciate your dedication to your cows and your farm and your kids just trying to create just a, an awesome experience for your whole family, but also for us to be able to enjoy your delicious products. So I know you mentioned that you guys bottle your own milk. I know we shared that in update three with everybody. Um, where, where are some places that folks can get that locally bottled milk? Do you know? So we have... I think we counted it up and we have roughly 40 places between Columbia, the Columbia area, the York area, mm -hmm. Rock Hill and um, Greenville Spartanburg area. So in the Columbia area, um, you can find it at, I'm making sure I remember all these names, right? Rosewood Market. Um, they carry some of our products in that area. And then in the York and Rock Hill area, You've got places like Black's Peaches and Cotton Hill Farms, um, the Country Carrot, uh, a lot of the coffee shops in Rock Hill. We deal with oh. them, some in Fort Mill, um, like you can run to Chatty Cathy's in Fort Mill and they always have milk. Uh, and then we have actually a lot of gas stations, a lot of the, the smaller gas stations. And once you get over towards the Greenville Spartanburg area, we have Tate Meat Works and the Feed and Seed um, and Country Meat Center. I know some of our participants in adopt a calf um, actually I went to the Country Meat Center and were able to get some milk to share with their class earlier mm -hmm. in the year. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we saw some of those pictures, too. So hopefully if you haven't had a chance to try out their milk, definitely see if you can make your way to one of those spots and try their milk. I've heard it's delicious. So Farmer Casey, um, we thank you for sharing all of that. And I but I know we've got a lot of folks who are very excited to get an update on our lovely ladies. So are we able to see them and and get an update on them? Yes. Yeah, so here is Jenny. And Jenny has always been our bigger adopted calf. She has grown substantially in the last couple of months. Um, and if you 
can see Carter Ann's going up there next to her. And when we first brought her out, she was not, um, when she was first born, she didn't come up to Carter Ann's waist hardly. And now she's almost as tall as Carter Ann. And then here comes Penny joining in the fun. Um, And there's Cora Clark, who's going to brush her her favorite little calf. Uh, (laughs) So they have both grown by leaps and bounds. And they have actually each probably gained close to 75 pounds since their last update. Holy moly. They have really (laughs) had, yeah, they've really been eating and just putting all that energy into growing. Wow. So I'm trying to remember quickly here. So Penny, in our third update, date she was about 250 pounds so you're thinking she's probably over 310 she, she is, pounds yeah now? she's getting really really close to probably being um close to 300 and and 10 pounds um we didn't weigh her exactly this morning but you can also see how much how tall she's gotten yeah um she is she has grown a good oh bit goodness. and she penny was the one we weren't sure um how fast she was going to grow because she was, she is from a first calf heifer, meaning that her, this is the first calf out of her mama and her mama's not a very big cow. Um, Her mama might be, she might be 48 inches at her, at her shoulder. So um, she, she's pretty short for a milk cow. Mm -hmm. especially for a Holstein milk cow. (laughs) (laughs) My goodness. Yeah. So, and then Ginny, we know, you know, she was 330 pounds at update three. So she's probably closer to what, almost 400 pounds. She is almost 400 pounds now. Yes. Um, Wow. And you can tell the height difference in the two Mm -hmm. of them here. Mm -hmm. Um, And those legs add a lot of poundage. Um, She's not, we would say she's not quite as filled out as Penny. Mm -hmm. Um, mm-hmm. She's not as deep and she's not going to be nearly as round, but neither her mama's got a lot of legs and not nearly as round either. So it makes sense. So they, do they tend to resemble their, their mother, their dam? Is, is that pretty common for cows? So they don't resemble them in what they look like as far as their color patterns. Their color mm. patterns are each unique, just like your fingerprint is unique. So mm-hmm. is the color pattern on a cow. Um, however, we have found that they typically do resemble their mother in their facial structure and in their body structure. So how tall they are, um, what, what their body type is, and also how much milk they make. Um, their mom can make a big difference on that. Interesting. Speaking uh, speaking of the milk, we actually had a question that someone was wondering about, uh, specifically from Antonio. They were wondering, um, you had mentioned how weather affects the milk. Can you just explain that a little bit more? Like, why does the weather impact how much they're producing? Okay, so this is going to be unique to farms that graze their cattle. Mm -hmm. Um, farms that have their cattle out on pasture those cattle are exposed to the weather Um, they are exposed to the sun they're exposed to the wind and the rain um, more so than a cow that is raised or lives in a in a barn Um, so that means that when weather isn't the most pleasant thing then they respond Sure. to using that energy to keep them warm or to, you know, mm-hmm. keep to move more to get out of the weather. Cause you mm-hmm. know, if it's raining, they might move more than they normally do right now. Um, you can't see the pasture from here, but the cows that are on the pasture are already out there laying down, you know, they're gotcha. resting and they're eating the grass that's around them that they can reach. So they're, they're easy going. They're not using a whole lot of energy. So they're putting more energy into making milk. Well, that makes sense. And just like us, right? Like when it's nicer out, I would say we, we don't have to work nearly as hard to stay warm or anything. In the cold months, we have to like work harder to stay, stay warm and probably don't feel like doing as much <laughs> when it's really cold out. So right. And what we have done and what we have learned over the years, um, We actually do have barns for the cows to stay in when the weather is really bad. So 
Gotcha. In our part of the country, that means, and in our part of the state, that means January and February, we put our cows in what is called a pack barn, which is similar to this pen right here, um, where they're just in a big open space, all the milk cows, to not all the milk cows, but a lot of them together. Mm -hmm. um, and they just move around however they would like to. There are no pens, there are no... Um, Mm -hmm. yeah, any kind of containment mm -hmm. just a big open space um and in january and february when it's cold and wet and sometimes early march a lot about half of the cows go in there um mm -hmm. and then we do that again and i bet you a lot of our listeners and our viewers can tell you um we do that again in about july september July, August, and September, um, yeah. because those are what we call the dog days of summer. <laughs> and <laughs> it's too hot. Yep. It's too hot. And so a lot of, about half the cows then go back into the barn um, to be able to rest more. Um, and we make that determination on who goes into the barn and who doesn't, kind of on our cows' personalities, because some of our <laughs> cows do not like to be in the barn. Some of our cows are very much they want to be outside and they do not want to be in the barn and if you put them in the barn they're going to tear something up to get out <laughs> and, and we have others some that are the other way right that really yes. want to be in the barn <laughs> yes and we have some that will tear things down to get into the barn so <laughs> we have kind of learned um and there are times that we just leave the barn open and who wants to go in can go in and who doesn't doesn't have to um depending on if it's not real wet outside, because if it's real wet, then they're going to be tracking things back and forth and they're going to make the barn wet. And sure. that's kind of the point. We don't want the barn to be wet. It will be wet. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Thank you for sharing that. That's a great explanation of just understanding, you know, how, how you take care of your cows, um, especially in an area where it can get very, very hot. And of course your cold months too. So, and that explains, you know, as you mentioned, you guys are in South Carolina. Um, we've got farms in this program that are in Maine and New York, and you'll see those cows more often in barns because it's really cold for a lot of the year. So we're trying yes. to keep them protected <laughs> that way. So that makes sense. Awesome. Um, we had Miss Rowling's class was wondering how much do they eat and what are they currently eating? Okay, so these calves eat approximately, depending on the day, they'll we will eat between 15 and 20 pounds together, not each. Okay. Um, and they eat a calf feed. I'm trying to get down here. They're eating <laughs> right now. So they eat a calf feed that has um, some molasses in it that mm -hmm. is a sugar uh, to help them gain energy. They also have some corn um, and some soybean meal. Oh, my phone is not liking that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and there is also, you see these little pellets. While they do have yeah. molasses in them, oh, they also have vitamins and minerals that the calves need to make sure that they have all of the nutrients. Um, okay. Our feed is we have a nutritionist who tells our feed company what we need in our feed to make sure that our cows and our calves um, grow to be the best that they can. So that make sure. sure they have everything that they need to grow. Because if they don't have all of their nutrients, just like if we don't, mm -hmm. then they can't grow. Sure. And, and then I'm they'll sure be really little. Like Right. And just like humans, I'm sure, you know, we like certain foods over other ones. So you have to mix it all together in, in your, in the grain and make sure that they're getting all the good stuff that they need in one bite every single time. Yes, because um, Jenny and Penny are probably like a lot of our students listening. They probably would not choose to eat broccoli and carrots <laughs> over chocolate and cookies. Um, and that is why the molasses is put into the feed is to give it that sweet taste to encourage them to eat more of mm -hmm. it. That makes sense. Awesome. Um, we can see your kiddos are very helpful here today. Um, we had a question from Ms. Reeser. They were just wondering, can the kids do all the jobs on the farm? Do they help with just about everything? So our kids do help with most of the jobs on the farm. Mm -hmm. However, there are some jobs that they can't do. Obviously, um, you know, we have a six, eight, 11, and 16 year old. And what our 16 mm -hmm. year old can do and what our six year old can do is a little <laughs> bit different. Sure. Um, our, 
our youngest three um, are in charge of tending to the calves. So every morning and every night, they're the ones who make sure that the calves get milk. They're the ones who make sure that the calves have bedding in their hutches if they're a hutch calf. Mm-hmm. And they are also the ones who go through and check and make sure that um, the calves on the hutches have feed. Um, the um, My father-in-law and the mm-hmm. three youngest take care of the next group of calves um, because they do need a little bit of help with feed bags and making sure that the calves don't get out when they're feeding them Um, and and making sure he just he's kind of like the checklist man making sure it all gets done and and taken care of Um, because sometimes we can tend to forget things like like all people and so (laughs) he's just there to check make sure they check the boxes yeah Um, absolutely our 16 year old helps milk in the morning and in the evening, most of the time. Um, So, and even though our six-year-old can come in and she can milk some of our smaller jerseys, she can't necessarily milk all of our cows. And so that's a lot. Yeah. (laughs) That is a lot. That's a lot. And some of them, um, some cows are really easygoing and gentle. um, And some of them are a little bit more high spirited. You know, when you bring in a a heifer, it's a little bit different than when you have an eight, nine-year-old milk cow. Yeah. Now, speaking of that, you mentioned eight or nine years old. We had someone who was curious, um, Miss Howell, was wondering, who is your oldest cow that you have on your farm? Do you know? Um. So right now, the oldest cow we have on our farm is probably Spunky Monkey. And oh. she is going to be eight or nine years old. Wow. Um, we... Our oldest cow was, uh, 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 we had a brown Swiss who was 11 um, oh my gosh. A- earlier this year, um, and, and she had a new calf, and she has just, she did not recover well from having her calf, because that's, when you get older, that's kind of how things happen, yeah. and, and so mm-hmm. she has gone on to her next phase of her life. Gotcha. Um, and yeah. then our oldest cow we've ever had was 15. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Now, 15 sounds like that's a bit of an extreme age. What's an average age for a cow? Because I think it's about, what, every 10 years for human years is about one year for a cow. So I don't that know is any humans correct. that lived 100. <laughs> um, and 15 is really extreme. She was a show, a show cow, and she was babied her entire life. Um, so... We don't see many cows live to 15. At our farm, I would say the average lifespan of a cow um, is probably six to seven years. Um, But that doesn't necessarily mean that those cows pass away. That just may mean that they are moved on to another job. Sure. Um, That means that their milking life is no longer the, the main part of their life. Right. Um, some of them go out to pasture and raise calves. Some of them go on, um, to a different part of the food system. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. Awesome. Thank you. Um, we had some folks curious if you have any other animals on your farms. One specifically mentioned, do you have any goats or any other animals? So we do have other animals. We have cows and obviously we have calves. We also have dogs. We have six dogs we probably have 25 cats that roam the farm because (laughs) well with with milk comes cats Mm -hmm. uh and we also have a donkey and i don't know you might can see our donkey he's down there with um some heifers that are waiting to have their first calf in the corner Um, we also, we don't right now, but we typically have some pigs and we always have about probably 40 chickens, um, on the farm. Wow. That's quite a farm. Uh, Lots of different (laughs) animals, lots of different um, things to take care of, but I'm sure when you've got the space and you've got the, and you're already in the mojo of taking care of the cows, it probably all just kind of happens all together. And, um, that's pretty cool. 
Uh, we had a good question come in. We can see all the cows in front of us right now. They're all black and white. So they're all Holsteins. Now you briefly mentioned a brown Swiss. Do you have other breeds on your farm other than Holsteins? We do. We actually, we actually have multiple breeds. Now the majority of our cows are Holsteins, um, or Holstein Jersey crosses that still typically come out black and white, or at least brown and white. Um, we have Spunky Monkey that I mentioned earlier. She is a Jersey. She is a purebred Jersey. So she is going to be um, a little bit shorter than mm -hmm. a Holstein. And she is very brown. <laughs> um, <laughs> and as my six-year-old is telling you, you can ride her. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like a pony. <laughs> um, and adorable. we have some brown Swiss. And we have one Ashar, um, who I don't know if you can see her, but she is walking down the lane, um, trying to see if I can. This is her right here. Oh, yeah. She's we going down the lane to go to the grazing pasture. Gotcha. Very nice. So they're going to the grazing pasture. We did have someone ask there wondering, do the calves ever get an opportunity to free roam? And I believe later as they get older, they'll get to go on pasture. Is that correct? That is correct. So the calves start out in a hutch um, to keep them safe mm -hmm. and to keep them where, where we can keep a really close eye on them and make sure they grow good and, and grow to their full potential. And then um, once they leave, the hutch, they actually go into a little bit bigger pens um, into a barn that has been converted for them. And that barn actually does have outside space to it. So each calf in that barn does have a space to go outside. Um, and mm -hmm. that is where they get their hay is outside so that it's not in the barn. And then you might not can see them, but once they get out of the barn, um, and typically they are four to five months when they leave the barn. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you can see them, but right over there in this pasture behind the yellow flowers mm -hmm. is where they go next. Oh. Um, and I think they're actually all hiding down along the tree line right now. <laughs> um, but they go there mm -hmm. and they stay there until they're ready to go across town to spend time with the bull and be bred. So they'll be oh, there yeah. from the time they're four to five months old until they are about 10 months old. Mm -hmm. um, and then they'll go across town to another pasture we have um, with a bull yeah. to be bred and become milk cows again. Yeah, absolutely. So they, and then they're, once they are pregnant, they're pregnant for the same amount of time as humans, right? Nine months. Yes. And then they have their calf. And once they have their first calf, they get to join the milking herd and get to our adopted calves. So once they're, so they're probably what, maybe like somewhere between 12 and 15 months old when they first go to meet the bull. Is that about right? That's probably about right. Yes. Yeah. For and us. Then, and because yeah. across the town, we have a couple of different pastures. And so we wait until they hit a certain size. Um, mm -hmm to move into the pasture with the bull. So they may start out in one, just getting used to the new surroundings and then graduate up in different pastures. And you can see right here, maybe I can zoom in on them. Oh, maybe not. I'm trying to see if it'll let me zoom in a little bit to see, and it's not going to let me right now. <laughs> That's um, okay. But there are some heifers down here in this corner with the donkey mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, who are waiting to have their first calf. And Aww. so they come over here where we can keep a close eye on them um, before they calve to make sure that they're doing well and that they don't have any problems. Because as you saw, our milk cows going down the lane right mm -hmm. here, our feed barn is this barn right here. Um, and so there are a good many cows still in there eating because nobody's pushed them to grazing yet. Gotcha. And then our milk barn is right behind that feed tractor right here. And so it's all right here close together so we can keep an eye on everybody and make sure that everybody is okay and doing well. Awesome, I love that. All right, Casey, we have 
loved getting to learn about your farm and learn a little bit more about our ladies here today. Um, I did just want to address one more question because I think it's a really great question um, before we start wrapping up. So Kobe just was curious, um, wanted to hear more about the milking process. So what is that like for a milk cow when they're milked? Okay, so when a that is a really good question. And that is something I think a lot of people um have in their mind that it looks something like you uh, saw in Farmer Boy uh, when you when you read that story um, or you listened to that story long ago and you you envision um, somebody sitting on a milking stool and hand milking a cow and that's not how we do it anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, so when the cows um, come to the barn, either they come out of the grazing pasture in the afternoons or they have a smaller pasture that they stay in at night they come up to the barn on the same lane you saw them walking down mm -hmm. they go into a holding pen so think of it for our school kids um, it's kind of like going to the gym or the cafeteria in the morning before you start school and everybody just kind of waits around um, mm -hmm. until it's their turn to go to their classroom, except in our barn, it's waiting until it's their turn to go into the milk line. Eight cows go in one side of our milk line at a time, and cows have their preferred side. Some cows like to go on the left side of the barn, some cows in the right side of the barn, and some cows are happy to go in whatever side is available at the time. <laughs> Once they come in, they are pre-dipped, and that means that there is a foam that is placed on each of their four teats that helps clean them off. Um, anything that might have got on them overnight, whether it be a little bit of dirt or sometimes it's the yellow flowers you see in the pasture um, gotcha. that need to be cleaned off. And once they are dipped, some, someone else comes through and they wipe them. And they wipe any dirt off. They wipe the foam off. They strip the cows, which means that they squeeze just the first little bit of milk out to make sure that everything is okay and that everything looks good. Um, and then a milker is put on them. And a milker is a vacuum that mm -hmm. has four different um, claws on it. We call them claws to attach to each teat. That milker stays on somewhere between five and seven minutes. And then the milker comes off um, when the cow stops giving a certain amount of milk. Um, once the milker's off, we post dip them, which is like a really thick iodine dip mm -hmm. that covers the teat and protects it from any of the things that they might encounter while they're out um, on pasture, while they're grazing, you know, if they lay down, it helps keep those teats clean and protected mm -hmm. so that nothing gets inside and makes the cow sick. Yeah, absolutely. And then wow. they're released to go. They're released out. And some of them kind of mill around and hang out kind of with their friends, I guess you'd say, and others go and eat and others go on to pasture. Wow. So it sounds like a pretty relaxing experience and something that's routine for them and just a lot of fun. So thank you so much for, for sharing that with us and something that's very, something you guys are very good at, very meticulous, making sure everything is clean and healthy and safe, um, but all a good experience for the cows. Very cool. Thank you, Farmer Casey. Um, Farmer Casey, we are wrapping up today. And my final question for you is just, what's your why? Why have you guys chosen to continue the farming legacy and, and farm, um, you know, what I think is a 12th, 13th generation? Um, what's your why for being a dairy farmer? Well, I, I know, Brittany, we've talked about this question over the years many times, and and every time it kind of changes just a little, um, but the main route always goes back to this is something that is born into you. Um, a love for agriculture, while I did not, I was not born and raised on a dairy farm, I was born and raised in the lower part, uh, in the southern part of Georgia, and we had beef cattle and sheep and row crops, so dairy cattle were kind of new when I married my husband. Actually, they were 
really the dairy was new for everybody because we got married and 15 days later, we started milking cows. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> so this has been a passion that had to grow on me because this was not my passion. Um, but being able to provide a product, a wholesome, nutritious product to a consumer faster than any other product from a farm you can imagine um, has been a huge thing. Being able to care for cattle and being with cattle every day, um, yeah. it is very much what um, my husband and I both were born to do. And it mm -hmm. it's not something that can be described easily because it is a lifestyle. This is not a job. Um, we do this 365 yeah. days a year. We are out with these cows twice a day. Yeah. We know them by name, whether it be their name is their number, because that can just be as affectionate as if I call them spunky monkey. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they are, they teach our kids responsibility. They teach them how to care for something mm -hmm. at all stages of their life. And they teach them how to deal with those stages that aren't as fun as others. Yeah. Um, it is our why boils down to God made us to be farmers and farmers provide food to others. And this is how we do it. Yeah, I love that. I absolutely love that. And we thank you so much for being such great caretakers of your cows and of your land and of your community. You are active members of your community by providing a whole a wholesome product for everyone to enjoy um, when you bottle your own milk and ship it off to be part of other dairy products too. So thank you so much, Farmer Casey, and to your entire family for clearly being great caretakers. Your girls are demonstrating that um, today with how much love they get. Uh, so thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts for being our host farmer this year and sharing your calves with us this year and in previous years. I will say we had a number of people who said that they adopted Oakley in the past and some other calves that we've had in the program. And they were just saying like, you know, they still love their past calves and they love following their calves to come. So thank you so much. Well, for and doing some this. of our, some of our calves are actually going to be half sisters to Jenny because she, her mom has been an adopted calf mama before. Oh. So <laughs> Oh, there are some goodness. definite, some generations going on here as well. And we are so cool. thankful to be a part of the program and so thankful we can share the dairy story with schools in our state. Because one thing that to us is very important with the number of dairy farms declining in our state rapidly is that people know where their milk comes from. Um, right now, we are less than 20 dairy farms in the state of South Carolina. Wow. Wow. That's, that's crazy. Well, we really definitely appreciate um, you sticking it out and still being here with us and making sure that everyone in South Carolina is getting that wholesome product um, to be able to enjoy. So thank you so much to you and your family. We've loved having you and uh, we will hopefully see you again next year, maybe with some more calves. So thank you so much, Farmer Casey. Thank you so much, Brittany, for all that you do with the adopt a calf program. We definitely appreciate you and all of the behind the scenes folks that we can't <laughs> see. <laughs> Absolutely. And thank you all for joining us today. We hope you had a blast getting to see your calves just doing what they do every day, hanging out in their pen with their family and with the host farm. So thank you all. Make sure to sign up for next year or re-enroll. That opens up 